Hi, my name is Todd. And I'm Evie. And we're with Archangelus Games. Uh, we're here today to show you our very first deck building game, Archangelus. Hopefully first of many to come. And to show you exactly how to play it and how easy it is to learn how to play. So let's get started. If you've ever played deck building games before, I think you'll find that this one's pretty easy to pick up. A lot of things will already be familiar to you. Uh, you'll see here that we've separated the cards into three piles. The ones with the black back, the ones with the red back, and the ones with the white back. This will make it a little bit easier to get started. We'll start with the ones with the black back. To set up the game, the first thing you'll want to do if you're playing with the commander's add-on is to pick out the commander cards. You'll notice they have a black back, but they have a yellow front, and they should say commander on them. At the beginning of the game, you and your opponent can either pick one of these at random, or you can allow everyone to pick the commander of their choice. As mentioned before, we do have an add-on to this game, which allows you to add commanders and titles to your game. Commanders, well, you pick one, you put it down in your play area, and it grants you some sort of bonus. In this case, all of your principalities are plus one light. Titles work a little bit like commanders, except you can buy them from the store. They have a white back, and so they are shuffled into your holy deck, and as they pop up in the store, they can be bought for their cost value, in this case, two. It goes into your discard pile, like any other card purchased from the store, and when it appears in your hand, you can play it down into your play area, and it stays there permanently, granting a bonus. In this case, all of your angels or demons that are powers, in their keywords, are plus one light. I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to pick Michael, and I'm going to place him right here on my, in my play area. I'll do... Ragwell? Ragwell. Okay. That being done, these cards can be returned to the box. Next, we should build our starting decks. Now, if you've never played a deck building game before, your starting deck is, well... Not good. It's pretty unimpressive. But... You're playing with the exact same starting deck as your opponent, so at least it's fair. During the course of the game, you will add cards to your deck that hopefully... Are better. Are better. All right, so we're going to pick out seven Aralim. There's seven for you. There's seven for me. And then three Nephilim. For each of us. Your heirloom will be the cards that give you the power to buy things right out of the gate. And your Nephilim, well, they're not very strong, but they'll be your first forces in the battle. So let's take a look at the cards you're going to start the game with. One of the most important is the heirloom. The heirloom aren't very powerful. They are angels, but they only have one what we call word. Word is what you're going to be using in the store to buy other cards. So they won't buy you much, but they'll get you started. The other kind of angel you start with are the Nephilim. And the Nephilim, well, you can see they don't have any word, but they have light. Light is what angels use in combat. So these are the first troops that you will want to put into your angel army. Also, you'll probably want to grab a turn reference card. This will remind you of the various steps. The last set of startup cards are the Ophanim. And the Ophanim are relatively inexpensive cards that as long as there are still some available, you can always buy from the store for just two word. We'll talk about word more in a moment, but word is what you're going to be using to buy cards. Next, we're going to take our white back deck. Okay, give this a good shuffle, and then this is going to form 
what we call the holy deck. And you can imagine it's all the good things. It's the angels, it's the mystical humans, it's ancient relics and powerful miracles. We're going to set that right next to our store. The red back cards, well, this is our infernal deck. And it's all the nasty stuff. It's the demons and their followers, some cursed objects. So you'll give that a good shuffle and you'll place that at the other end of the store. Then starting with the holy deck, we're going to pick five cards and place them face up in a row. These are the first cards that people will have available to buy. And then the last thing to do is to set up our locations. Locations also have a black back, and these are what you're going to be fighting to control. So we shuffle the locations deck. We place three face up where everybody can see them. Those are the first three available to be challenged. And then just take the rest of the locations and set them off to the side. This is a location card. Locations are what you will be fighting to capture. In this case, it's Medicine Wheels, Wyoming. All locations in our game represent real places in the real world, places known for being particularly mysterious or mystical. There are two parts to a location card. The first part you'll see is a reward. If you capture this location, it'll allow you to add certain angels and demons to your final army. And underneath it is the condition. When you're trying to capture this location, in this case, angels with relics are ignored. Right? That means they won't count towards your total when trying to take it. We take our decks, shuffle our decks real good, and we're ready to play. It's that simple. Let's look at one of our angels. All cards in the Archangelus game have this same essential card layout. We'll start up top. You can see this number here of four. This is the cost of a card. On any card, the number you see in the upper left corner is the cost to purchase it from the store. To the right of that, you'll see the name of the card. And as we go down, you'll see down here, this is its word value. Word is what is used to buy things in the store. Over here, in the bottom right corner, is the light value. Light is used in combat. You'll also see some keywords, in this case, sacred, archangel, virtue, seraphim. These will interact with other cards in the game. And lastly, if the card has an ability, it will appear here. And it will give instructions on how that ability may be used. Let's look at all the cards that you'll find in the holy deck. We've already taken a look at angels. You'll buy angels, you'll add them to your discard, and eventually they'll turn up in your hand. These angels can be played into what is called your host. We'll show that in a minute. And that's essentially your angel army. Each angel can be equipped with one sacred relic, such as this, the Duban. Angels sometimes get help from humans. You can have one human in your host area with your angels, and they usually provide some sort of bonus. And last but certainly not least, there are miracles. When you play this card from your hand, you simply do whatever its ability says to do, and then it goes to your discard. Your Infernal deck has some, well, less savory characters. You have demons. The demons won't be played to your host, of course. They'll be played to a different area called your horde. Your horde will oppose 
your opponent's hosts as they try to conquer locations. Each demon can be equipped with one profane relic, in this case the monkey's paw, and it provides whatever bonus or ability it says it provides. Yes, there are profane humans as well, and you can put one of them into your horde area, and they will provide some sort of bonus or boon. And there are unholy miracles, and these behave just the way their sacred counterparts do. All right, I think we're ready to get started looking at how a turn occurs. So on your turn, you'll take your deck and you'll take the top three cards. Turn them over and see what you've got. In this case, I have two cards with word values. Again, word values I can spend in the store. So I'm gonna set those aside for right now. I have one card, it doesn't have any word value, so it's not gonna do me any good in the store, but it does have a light value. I'm going to play it directly to my host area, which is just an area in front of me where my angels will be placed. So now I have a value of one light in my host. Now, we'll talk about how to challenge a location later, but that's not nearly enough to challenge any of these locations. So I'm gonna to need to get some more angels before I decide to attack a location. So let's see what I can do. I have a total of two word. So let's see what's available in the store. This Smite Miracle costs three. Metatron is a very powerful angel, so he costs six, so we're not nearly ready to buy him. She costs four, the shield is three, and the Willing Vessel is three. I can't buy any of these but you can always buy an Ophanim as long as they're available. And again, the Ophanim are inexpensive. They only cost two. They provide two word and two light, so they can be used to buy things, or you can add them to your host to make it stronger. When you buy a card, whether it's one of the cards in the store or an Ophanim, you add it to your discard pile. All right. The cards that I spent in order to buy it, they also go to the discard pile. And just like that, my turn is over, and it's time for my opponent's turn. When it's my turn again, I'll draw three more cards. If I go to draw cards, and my deck is empty, well then it's time just to reshuffle. I draw however many cards are left, and reshuffle the rest to make a new draw pile. And this is how cards that you buy become a part of your deck. Let's go shopping. We'll show how interactions with the store work on your turn. Let's say I decide to spend these two cards for their word values. I'm not going to play them this turn. I'm just going to use them to buy new things. So I've got two on this card and two on this card. So I can buy four cost worth of cards from the store. So I could pick up this card that costs four. I could pick up this one that costs three and have one left over. This one costs three, this one costs three, this one costs six. So he's still too expensive for me. Whatever card I buy, I pick it up and I place it in my discard, as well as any cards that I spent to buy it. And now I have a choice to make. Do I want to fill this empty space with a card from the Holy Deck or from the Infernal Deck? Whichever one I choose, I turn one card face up to fill the empty space. If I have more word to spend, I can go ahead and buy more cards at this point. If I'm out, well, then my turn is over. Let's say it's a little later in the game, and I've picked up some really good cards from the store, and they come into my hand. Well, I have some decisions to make. Okay, This relic 
it can only be equipped to an angel. You see, it provides no word, so I can't use it to buy things. It provides no light. It just enhances one of my angels already in play. So what I can do is I can equip it to an angel in my host. Angels can only have one relic equipped. And of course, angels only get sacred relics. Demons get the profane ones. Here's a decision I have to make. This is an angel. She has a word value of two. She has a light value of four. So I can either spend her or play her, but not both. So I could choose to put, say, both of these cards down, adding together their word values, and I could buy a card of value four. Or I could add this angel to my host making my host stronger, I could add this human to my host. Remember, I can have one sacred human in my host. But now, I have nothing left to spend, and my turn is over. All right, let's talk about building our horde. You can see here, I've been working very hard on my host. I have three angels. A total of nine light points, and I've equipped a relic to one of my angels. Also, I've added one human, one being the maximum, to the host. But how do I build up my horde? Well, it's very similar, but with some limitations. I can play a demon from my hand directly into my horde. Now, normally, you can only have one demon in your horde, unless that demon is a prince, let's say, because a prince can add one duke. So later, if I draw a duke, I can add a duke to my horde. Oh, and a duke allows you to add a chief. So if later I draw a chief, I can add a chief to my horde. This is the only time you can have more than one demon in your horde, is if you have a prince and you're adding a duke, or you have a duke and you're adding a chief. You can also add one human to your horde, just as you could to your host. And you can equip profane relics to your demons, the same way you can attach sacred relics to your angels. So, let's talk about host challenges. On your turn, you can draw your three cards and play them as normal, or you can execute a host challenge. But you can't do both. A host challenge is where you use your host to try to conquer one of the three available locations. All locations require 10 points of light to conquer, but they also all have different restrictions. For example, this one ignores the abilities of all humans when challenging this location. So we can forget any bonuses or help that this human provided if I choose to challenge this one. This one, the host challenging this location must include a human, in which case I'm good because I do have a human in my host. So when you do a host challenge, you declare, I am challenging this location. Your opponent now has a chance to execute a horde challenge to try to stop you. I've got 10, 11 light. Remember, 10 is what's required. Problem is, my opponent is going to challenge with his horde, which contains Samael. And Samael has 4 light. That effectively reduces my host by 4 light. My opponent will take four light and decide which of my angels to remove from this challenge. So he or she could say, I'm sending home this one of four light. Or they could send home both of these, a total of three light, and the extra would just be wasted. But let's say, 
he decides to send home this angel. This angel goes to my discard, and now I've got a problem. I now only have seven points of light, and that's not enough to conquer the location. My opponent discards their demon, and my turn ends unsuccessfully. I don't win the location. But let's say I still had enough. Let's say I also had this card in my host. Well, now I've got a total of 16. 16 light. My opponent challenges and says, I'm removing this card with four, four light. They discard their demon. I still have enough. At this point, I have 12 light, which is more than the 10 required. So I win the location, and it comes to my side of the table, and we replace it with a new face up location. When either player wins their third location, it's time to move on to the final battle. When a player wins their third location, it's time for the final battle. As we mentioned before, every location has a reward on it. This one says add one angel and one demon. This one says add one angel. This one says add one demon. If I add those up, I get to add two angels and two demons. I can now look through my entire deck and discard all my cards that I've accrued during the game, and I can pick out any two angels and any two demons. So I can look through all my cards. I'm going to add her. Generally, I want cards with a high light value. Okay, I think I've found my final army. So I'm going to take these cards and I'm going to place them out here face down. My opponent has won two locations. And their locations say they can add one demon and two Ophanim to their final army. So they search through their deck and they find one demon and a couple of Ophanim and they put those cards face down. When everybody's ready, we reveal our cards, and you total your light values. You can see on this side, we have 16, 16 light. On this side of the table, we only have eight. So this player wins the game. In the event of a tie, you compare word totals. And if the word totals are tied too, well, then the game is a stalemate. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're interested, our Archangelus game is available for preview right now on GameFound. So just uh, look us up and you can follow our project so that when it goes live, which is scheduled for May 1st, 2023, uh, you'll be the first to get notified. And you can go out and uh, pledge the project. Uh, don't forget to check out the available add-ons, uh, the Commander add-on, World Locations, Unlikely Allies, and the four-player expansion, uh, because those will add a lot to your game. Anyway, thanks for your time and attention today. Evie and I appreciate it. Thank you.